Getting proper focus is absolutely essential for every single shot you're gonna do in your career, but it's not always an easy thing to achieve. Cameras tend to have very small LCD screens that are difficult to read, and on top of that, if the camera's moving, that makes it exponentially harder. Yes, autofocus does have its place, but it can also be very restrictive as well. You need a camera with great autofocus, you need to make sure your lenses have autofocus, and even then, it can be somewhat unreliable. Ultimately, there's a reason that manual focus is the standard in filmmaking and that's because only you know what you want in focus at any given time. That's why we're going to look exclusively at tools that help you nail your focus instead of relying on your camera to do it for you. We're going to start with the free options that are likely already built into your camera and then move on to some paid options if you don't have those luxuries. But keep in mind you do get what you pay for and there's a reason that the last tip even though it's the most expensive I think is the best option all around but I'll let you decide that for yourself. No matter how affordable your camera is, it's highly likely that it has digital zoom built into it. A digital zoom will let you crop into your frame to give you a closer look at your footage. And oftentimes you can move that frame around within your composition, just in case your subject is maybe off in a corner or off to one side instead of the center. This gives you a way better view of your subject and lets you make sure all of those edges are nice and sharp before you start recording. As handy as this is, there are some downsides to this method as well. Many cameras won't actually let you record while you're zoomed in. And this can be a problem if you're doing any sort of moving or tracking shot where your focus may change over time. You won't be able to check it once you've already hit record. Even if your camera does let you do that, a shocking amount of these cameras will actually bake that zoom into your footage and that's just wrong. You also have to handle the camera anytime you want to use this feature, which may not seem like a big deal, but if you're using a glide cam or a gimbal, you run the risk of adding some minor shake or jitter into your footage anytime you go to access those buttons. For all these reasons, it's not great for moving shots. It's better suited for things like static interview setups where you won't need to readjust your focus during the shot. On the plus side, I can almost guarantee that you have this feature in your camera regardless of the budget because it is such a common standard feature. Even if everything looks great on the camera screen, just take that extra second and double check with your digital zoom because trust me, you don't wanna take the risk and that's coming from someone who's made that mistake more times than I'm willing to admit on camera. <laughs> I said no. Now some of you may be asking, if I have a zoom lens, why can't I just do it that way? Why can't I zoom in all the way, get my focus correct, and then zoom back out to the focal length that I want? First of all, that restricts your lens choice. But even if it didn't and you had all the greatest lenses in the world, it still causes a problem because without getting into too much detail, some zoom lenses will maintain their focus regardless of what the focal length is set to, but other ones, the focus is going to change as soon as you adjust it. If you really want to, you can test your zoom lens and see how well it holds focus throughout the zoom range, but ultimately that's only going to help you with that one lens and you're probably going to be shooting on more than just that. So I'd recommend one of these tools instead because they're going to be a lot more versatile and a lot more applicable to other situations. The next tool you have at your disposal is what's called focus peaking and this is one that I'm a big fan of. Focus peaking is going to highlight the edges of anything in your frame that's in focus and it does this by finding some high contrast edges in the frame and then painting them in with typically yellow, blue, or red pixels. This is something that's not as common in lower end cameras and DSLRs, but when you get into mirrorless cameras or even just kind of mid-range DSLRs, you're still gonna see this feature quite a bit. This fixes a lot of the issues that we had with digital zoom, which is first of all, we can't use it when we're recording. Well, now we can turn it on and just keep it on for the entire shot because it's not gonna bake in that overlay onto our footage. The other fantastic thing is now we don't have to zoom into our footage to make sure that something's in focus. We can see the entire frame at all times and all we have to look for is those highlighted edges to make sure that we're nailing our focus. The downside to focus peaking is that it's not always 100% accurate and you can actually screw up your focus if you don't fully understand how it works. As you can see in this example here, focus peaking is telling me that my subject is in focus. But if I turn my focus ring just a little bit more on the lens, you can see that that highlight gets much stronger. So to avoid any rude awakenings when you bring the footage into post, I like to make sure that I nail my focus according to the focus peaking, and then I'll double check by just turning the ring a little bit in either direction, just to see if that highlight gets stronger or weaker. And then I'll know exactly where I'm getting the most amount of peaking, 
and that's where I'm truly going to be in focus. The default color in my camera is yellow, but obviously that's going to be a nightmare if I'm shooting in a set that's got a ton of yellow in it, or I'm trying to focus on an object that's yellow. You can change this color to red or blue or anything else that's going to make it stand out and be very clearly visible when you're shooting. Because of all those reasons, it is the focus tool that I reach for the most regardless of what my setup is or what the shot is. Real quick here, I'm just going to address Canon users specifically. If for some reason you have a really old or a very cheap Canon that doesn't have digital zoom or focus peaking in it, I'd recommend checking out Magic Lantern. Magic Lantern is a third party piece of software that's developed for Canon cameras specifically to unlock features that aren't already in those cameras, such as digital zoom and focus peaking. It offers way more features than just that. And more importantly, it works for a ton of cameras, including the most budget models like the Canon T3i and T5i. It's its own whole rabbit hole that we're not gonna explore together today. But if none of the other options in this video work for you, I do recommend that. The vast majority of cameras have a video output, so you can take some form of HDMI cable and run it to a computer monitor or a TV. This is a different approach to things where you're just verifying your focus by having a bigger size screen and a larger pixel count. This is awesome for more formal interview shots and static setups, but it's just not something that's practical for moving shots. A screen that big has to kind of stay in one place, and you're going to be tethered to that and limited in the distance that you can go based on the length of that HDMI cable. And even if you don't need to go that far, it's just really inconvenient to be tethered by a cable at all times. It can get in the way, it can trip people, and you can even rip out the video jack in your camera and damage it if it gets accidentally stepped on and pulled out. There's also no way that you can easily move that thing around. Like it's not like you can just mount it on a gimbal but I would pay really good money to see someone try that. This is not gonna be the best solution for most people, but if you are in that group that mostly shoots these more formal static setups like this one here, then I'll link a couple screens that you can check out that might be a good fit for you. Saving the best for last, you can actually get all of the things we've talked about so far in a single package if you invest in an external monitor. As an example, I've had my Aperture Fine HD monitor for like three years now, and it has a great big display that's nice and sharp. It has focus peaking and it has digital zoom, all for just 200 bucks. And back then, that was cheap, but now it's gotten even more affordable to get all those features in a monitor. Caleb at DSLR Video Shooter covers a lot of these cheaper monitors that pack a real punch. So I really recommend you go to his channel and check out some of those reviews. Now, yeah, it's gonna cost you between 100 and 200 bucks to get one of these, but it's going to be worth the investment because you're gonna use it on every single shoot. Besides just helping you nail your focus, these often come with a lot of tools to help you with other things like nailing your exposure or giving you the ability to de-squeeze your anamorphic footage or even just a headphone monitoring output just so you can check your audio a little bit easier. If I had to pick just one option, I would recommend the external monitor easily because it covers everything we've talked about and way more. Okay, I have one last bonus tip and you're not gonna like it, I know, but it needs to be said. And that's to just practice. Focus isn't like white balance where you just set it and forget it. It's a really important thing that you need to be an active participant in. And there's a reason that that's a dedicated person's job on a film set is just to nail the focus because it's that important and it is a skill that you need to develop. Plan out some sort of moving shot just within your house. Pick a couple objects that you're going to change focus to throughout the shot and then just practice that shot over and over again. An even more effective exercise is if you have kids or you have pets, go take them to a park and just sit somewhere with your camera and just try and follow them with your focus the entire time. It's really hard, but not only does it develop the same skill sets about judging distance and all that, but it also helps you predict movement. And that's gonna be really important if you're shooting any sort of documentary style or anything where you can't plan out the blocking and movement perfectly. Even with narrative work, you're gonna have moments where your actors end up doing something that you're not prepared for that wasn't in the blocking just because they're trying to do something different or deliver the best performance that they can. And you need to be ready to be able to follow them. These tools are not meant to be used as a crutch or a fix for lacking in skill. So make sure you develop that skill set so that you can end up with the best possible end result. I hope this helped you out. And if it did, I'd appreciate you helping me back by subscribing, liking, any of that stuff that you're already familiar with. But until then, I will see you in the next video.